Welcome to the uh, Half Moon um, in Putney, in London. Um, a very historic place where many famous people have played here before. Uh, particularly the Rolling Stones, which I think is very cool. And uh, we're here to discuss, talk about, go through uh, my fourth studio album entitled Flesh and Blood. Behind every veil, stamped on every soul. I don't think that nobody knows what they're fighting for. We all need a little love. You know, I wanted to use people, use musicians, use a producer, use a location that was all completely new to me. And I was in New Orleans with my brother, and it was time to go home. Chris, Chris boarded the flight, and I decided to hire a convertible and, and drive across two states, you know, across the Mississippi and everything, um, to Nashville. Um, I had been introduced to a guy up there from a label called 30 Tigers. It's a really great independent label. They do like drive-by truckers and, and bands like that. Um, so I went in to see this guy, David. Um, turns out David is the original manager of the Black Crows. He was the guy that got their first deal. So I'm talking to David about the, the third record in, in the States and everything, and he asks me about, you know, what about your fourth record if you thought of a producer? And he said, well, listen, you know, a good friend of mine is really into now producing bands, and you know, he's sort of turning a little, he's got a turning point in his career, and I think he would be a great, a great fit for you. And I'm like, great, who, you who is it? And he's like, Rich Robinson from the Black Crows. And I'm like, really? Okay. The black crow in my sky and it's soaring round And it goes high, goes high, high up above the ground So um, he gave me his number and I remember calling him up in, in the car when I was driving and, and I was so nervous because I'm like, yeah, I don't know what this guy's going to be like, I don't know if he's going to be really cool with me or whatever. And we had this really long conversation, like 40 minutes long, all about the concept of the record and what I wanted to do, and, you know, and it was just, it was great. And uh, I met him in a rehearsal space in LA, and I was like terrified. Because I'm one of those people that, I don't mind playing in big crowds, but when it comes to like, when I see the whites of your eyes, that's when it scares me, you know, because you can really see me then. And he was like here, and I was there, and I'm playing these songs, you know, acoustically. And, uh, and he didn't make much of a noise, which was quite scary as well. And at the end of it all, just said, you know, I think they're really strong songs. Yeah, you know, I think maybe we can tweak them here and there, and, and I'd love to do the record. And I was like, wow, really? Is <laughs> this really real. happening, you know? So that was the beginning. to record the record in Nashville because a lot of the players we use are all based in Nashville. Um, Steve Gorman, the drummer from the Crows, Audley, who was you know ex-guitar player from the Crows, um, Mike Webb, who you know has played with a, a multitude of, of people. Um, you know, and it's so so it was a great cast of characters, and they're all based in Nashville basically. So we went to the 16 Ton Studios, you know, famous studio, recording studio, and it was great. It's one of those places that you set up a a mic in the bathroom, you know, it was the, every room is utilized in terms of space and, and, and sound, so it's really organic. Hey baby, I just got back from town with the bribes of I remember being six years old and in my in the in the passenger seat of my mum's car, which at the time was a Vitara Jeep. It was all the rage in the nineties. Um and I remember being in the passenger seat, and my mom used to introduce me to all sorts of music when I was younger. Um, my dad was like the Beatles and Patsy Cline and Roy Orbison and the Eagles, and my mom was more into Americana. Um, she always liked the American and the Canadian artists. Um, she was a big fan of Joni Mitchell, um, you know, Steve Mellencamp, 
obviously Springsteen and you know Steve Earle and those kinds of those kinds of cats. Um, but one in particular was a lady called Buffy St. Marie, and I discovered Buffy sitting in the passenger seat of my mother's Vitara Jeep when I was six years old, and she played me a song called The Big Ones Get Away. And I just um, struck a chord with me, and it honestly really was the moment in which I figured out, as a shy little girl with not much confidence, that you could have a voice, you know, in another way, that you could sing, and that you could sing whatever was in whatever you were feeling, and that it was another way to translate, you know, your feelings and your emotions and uh, get your point across. So the deal's already made. Buffy is a Native American. Um, she wrote it originally about, you know, the, the plight of her people, and um, and it's it's very heartfelt. And it's very powerful, um, but it really translates to a lot of issues in modern world. You know, um, it really is a, a people's song, and. You know, throughout my career, especially from right at the beginning, you know, with my first song that ever came out, was really all social commentary. Um, but just put in a way that is a little interesting, maybe it's slightly controversial. And, you know, I, I, I really, I pay credence to the people in, in the past who have been singers, you know, like Dylan, um, Buffy, people that have really, you know, stood for something. And, um, I really think that's massively important as a singer, as a songwriter, that you do try and represent, you know, the, what's going on in the world in some way, shape, or form. You know, and, and it can it can be in any style of music. It doesn't have to be folk. It can be anything. You know, I mean, it can be you know, I, even like labyrinth, a modern day artist can can tr have a message in a song. So, so um. This song is, is is really important to me in my life, and it's you know stuck with me for a lot of years. So when uh, I made this record, I really wanted to cover the track. Um, you know, I finally got the opportunity to just do this because it was me. I was the the decision maker, and I was in the hot seat. So I really wanted to, to cover this song. Um, what I didn't expect was to have Buffy St. Marie sit in on it with me and guest guest vocal on it so that was a, a huge surprise um we literally just you know contacted her she lives in hawaii um and she happened to be in in the area and she just she came in and, and she sat in on it and it was a it was a really huge moment for me um but she was just spectacular she was just you know the life and soul of the party um and to have her next to me singing her song with me was one of the greatest roles of my life. To reach to the sky. You know, I think that, you know, hopefully I can continue to create music that invites new fans always along the way. I like to be able to do something that's different each time and new and refreshing and, you know, offers up a different take on things, but at the same time I think with my closest fans, you know, who are my friends really, um, have been on this journey with me anyway, and hopefully I think the ones that know me the most will get why these, you know, these songs and where I've been coming from. Yeah.